Welcome. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and we here... We here join you from the Ed Sullivan Theater with all these beautiful people. And ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Look at that. We are live right there. It's our live election show. And because these days it often feels like our politics are in the upside down, we're calling tonight Stranger Midterms 2022. That hill. Oh, yeah. We're running up that hill tonight. Though the GOP is picking up seats in the House, so far it does not look like a red wave. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, too early to tell, perhaps a pink trickle. <laughs> they should really have that checked out. <laughs> and you're all going to want to stay with us for the next hour because we will have up to the minute election results and up to the minute election denials. In fact, <laughs> We have prepared three results graphics tonight. Winner, loser, and loser yelling that they won just as their friend holding a pillow. Because the thing is... Republican election deniers out there are on ballots in 48 of the 50 states tonight, making up a majority of this year's GOP nominees. And if any of them are elected to Congress, that's going to make the next insurrection real awkward. <laughs> Hang myself! Hang myself! <laughs> now, all night, all night long, these election numbers are going to be pouring in, and I know you expect up-to-the-minute analysis from comedy shows. But if half the country denies the existence of math, it doesn't really matter where we get the numbers from. So please welcome The Late Show's senior elections analyst, live from the CBS Midterms Projection Coop, Steve Klucknacki. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Steve, thank you for joining us from The Coop. Steve, you've been keeping a sharp eye and an even sharper beak on tonight's results. What trends are you seeing out there? Okay, he's, wa he's wandering around Georgia. <laughs> Could mean a high rural turnout. Could mean he saw a delicious grub over there. Thank you, Steve. We'll be checking in all night on your impeccable and excellent analysis. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry, Steve. That was insensitive. Those are your children. Now, one of the biggest races that everyone has been watching is in Georgia between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. And right now, they are neck and almost entirely neck. <laughs> it is so tight. It's still tight? Is this still a tight race? It is so tight, this race could be decided by a margin of error of plus or minus Herschel Walker's secret children. <laughs> and is this true? I'm told we do have some results. Uh, here in New York, in a shocker, the Senate race has been called for Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. And... Out of respect for his opponent's political demise, Schumer will be wearing his glasses at half-mast. <laughs> in... This gentleman. In the Florida governor's race, Democrat Charlie Crist has been defeated by MAGA wannabe and 2024 hopeful Ron DeSantis. And now, in accordance with Florida law, Charlie Crist will be forced on a plane and flown to Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> staying, we're staying in Florida? Staying in Florida in the Senate race, it looks like Republican Marco Rubio has defeated Democratic rising star Val Demings. In 2020, Demings was on the short list to be Joe Biden's running mate, while Rubio is on the short list for being short. <laughs> Up in New Hampshire, Republican Governor Chris Sununu has been reelected. Sununu will remain in office as the chief executive of one of these two states. <laughs> Still not sure which one. In the other one of uh, whichever those states it is, Vermont, the Senate race has wrapped up, and Democrat Peter Welch is the winner. <laughs> At 75, at 75 years old, Welch is the oldest person ever elected to a first term as a U.S. senator. However, at 75, he will also be one of the youngest members of the Senate. 
Over in Indiana, incumbent GOP Senator Todd Young has won re-election without the 45th president's endorsement, making him one of the most successful Republicans to have zero support from the former president. The least successful? Eric. <laughs> now, here's the thing. In midterms, the presidency is not on the ballot tonight, so we're primarily focused on control of the House and the Senate. The Republicans only need a net gain of one seat in the Senate and five seats in the House. Don't know what's going to happen, but here's what we do know. There are two possible outcomes tonight. Either the Democrats will get more votes and keep the Congress, or the Democrats will get more votes and lose the Congress. <laughs> That's the way our government works. <laughs> Chances look especially good for Republicans in the House, as 538 gives them an 84% chance of taking control. Now, to arrive at that Republican advantage, pollsters asked a lot of questions, but the one I'd like to answer it is, has anyone heard of January 6th? Remember when the folks who got elected today supported a violent attack on our government? Did people forget the zip ties, the shaman with the horns, the beating up of the cops, the calls to hang the vice president? Am I missing anything? The poo-poo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, if the Democrats lose the House, Nancy Pelosi will be replaced by Kevin McCarthy, a guy who is on tape after January 6th asking for the ex-president to be removed from office. But instead, three weeks later, he removed his own balls and hand-delivered them to Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> if McCarthy is elected speaker, one of the first things on his party's agenda is revenge on the January 6th committee. They plan to subpoena members of the select committee, particularly Liz Cheney. Hey, GOP, I know you're feeling confident, but are you sure you want to mess with the Cheneys? <laughs> if you mess with the Liz, you may awaken the dick. <laughs> Remember the shotgun to the face? That's how he treats his friends. Long has he slumbered, and oh, how he hungers. You won't hear him coming because he doesn't have a heartbeat. GOP also plans to move... also plans to move this country forward... by investigating the foreign business deals of Hunter Biden. I knew we should never have elected President Hunter Biden. <laughs> hold on, hold on. That sound means we have an update from the CBS Midterms projection coop. There's... What, what do we got here? Steve... There's Steve Klucknacki, joined by his colleague, John Chicken a King. Got, what, are, what are you seeing, fellas? Oh, oh, no. Looks like my colleagues had a little accident off the coast of Oregon. <laughs> Bit of a vote dump, shall we say. Jim, can, can we get our head statistician, Robin Fearberg, to go in there and clean up the map? You're, do, you're doing important work, Robert. <laughs> are, 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 you, are you enjoying wiping up chicken poop while you wait for the results to come in? I used to work at CNN. One race that might test our patience tonight is the Pennsylvania Senate race, which pits Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, seen here about to swat a satellite out of low orbit, <laughs> against GOP candidate and realtor who never said there wasn't a murder in this house, Dr. Mehmet Oz. Now, here's the thing. In Pennsylvania, they're not allowed to process mail-in ballots before Election Day, so it could be several days before we have results. If no winner has been declared by the time the new Senate is sworn in, the vacant seat will then be occupied by Senator Gritty. <laughs> and I'm being told, is this true? We have more results out of the state of Georgia. Jim, can we get the Georgia graphic up there? <laughs> that appears to be a bunch of grubs and a warm nest of hay. That's not the graphic I was counting on. Jim, what's going on in the control room? Jim. Jim, what's happening? Okay, it appears the chickens have seized power. <laughs> Jim, don't panic. I will send in an extraction team with a fry daddy and some buffalo sauce. In the meantime, we've got a great show for you tonight. My guests are CBS News anchor John Dickerson and comedian Mike Verbiglia. When we come back, more election results.